Jeff, I mean, we were cold up in the booth during that game. We were covered, though, from the wind and, and the snow. What was it like to play in that match? Uh, yeah, I mean, cold. <laughs> I mean, it was cold, and it, it just made things so difficult because you couldn't, I mean, for me, from my perspective, I couldn't even really see down to the other side of the field. So for me to even know what was going on down there while trying to keep warm, I was just kind of running around in a circle trying to do anything I can to get my heart rate up, but it was it was challenging and it was cold. Uh, it's cool to be a part of history, but at the same time, it, I don't know. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty cool. I mean, watching uh, all the images from the game, they're, they're blow drying the the lines. Um, how how did the the snow affect the actual gameplay on the field? Well, once the snow, I think in the first half it wasn't too bad, but then once the snow really started to build up and you started to see, I mean, it looked like there was at least an inch or two yeah. on the ground. So once the snow really started to build up on the ground just the way that the ball moved, the ball stopped at times when it would normally roll through, and just different things like that. And then, you know, your footing and just, just a lot of different situations where, you know, there's a reason that you don't play normally on the ice for soccer. Right. And yes. So everything that no. you could think was going wrong <laughs> with ice and that type of condition probably was. And these images are awesome. I love the video. I love some of the pictures from the match as well. We can show some pictures during the national anthem. You guys gave your jackets to the kids that, that you walked out with. They must, they must have been freezing. Um, t tell me what was going through your mind in these moments. Well, it was in that moment that I realized just how cold it was because that was a very <laughs> First time I took my jacket off, but no, I mean those poor kids. They had on Under Armour and a T-shirt, and they were shivering. And you know, at that point, it just I think uh, you know the instinct to take care of, take care of the cold kids, kind of kicked in. But it was it was a cold day, man. It was it was it was something. <laughs> And Jeff, you, you talk about the, obviously the result of the game. Uh, you guys are up, you're in control, you're, you're a man up, and then uh, it's disappointing you give one away at the end. What was the, the overall feeling after this one? No, I mean, it was definitely disappointment. Um, you know, I think before the game, if you say, well, you go to Colorado and there's a blizzard and it's 18 degrees, would you take a point? <laughs> right. I think the answer is, of course, but, you know, the way the game played out and it kind of seemed like we had control of the game at, when they got that red card, so to let it kind of slip away and only get a point out of it was definitely disappointing. Jeff, you guys played LAFC a few times last year. You also played them in, in the Open Cup. What do you make of this year's team? You know, they're very dangerous out wide. Um, Rossi and Bella, they can cut in and cause a lot of problems, but, you know, they also bomb those outside backs forward as well. So, you know, defensively, it's just something that we're going to have to be aware of, you know, tracking runners and especially doing the best that we can to keep them out of those dangerous spots because especially with talent like they have, once you're in front of net, if you have those open opportunities, they're probably going to punish you. So. For us, you know, I think we just need to tighten it up a little bit defensively and just make sure we're aware of where those guys are at all times. And, you know, if we can uh, play solid defensively, I think that we can catch them going the other way. When you say catch them going the other way, uh, you talk about transitional moments. And, and as I watched this game, it just it appeared to me that there are a lot of gaps in that midfield area. And it seems like uh, you guys have a lot of uh, players who can expose uh, LAFC on the counter. Yeah, I mean, listen, uh, I think when, when Sebastian gets a head full of steam, when Polo gets a head full of steam, you know, even with two inches of snow on the ground, they were still, they were still motoring and doing pretty well going forward. So, you know, I think it's going to be a really good challenge for us early in the year. And, of course, it's not an easy place to play, but, you know, we'll be up for it. And it'll be nice to, uh, to, play, a normal, to play a normal game. Yeah, hopefully the weather will be a little better. The Timbers and LAFC kick off 4.30 on Sunday down in Los Angeles. You can watch the match on FS1, or you can listen on the radio, 1029-750, the game, where Nat and I will be on the call. Jeff, you've always been quite active outside of soccer. We know about your children's books. We'll talk about maybe an update of that in a moment. Recently, you also started a podcast with your roommate on the road, Zarek Valentin. Before we chat about that, we're going to take a look at this clip from a preseason piece that's on Timbers.com. Oh, boy. Welcome back to From J to Z. I'm Zarek Valentin. And I'm Jeff Atanella. And this episode is brought to you by our good friends at Old Trapper Beef Friggin' Jerky. Man, I love that stuff. You know, Zarek and I, I were just pretty normal guys that happen to play soccer. We thought it would be pretty cool to just kind of share the experiences that we're going through and, you know, let people hear a little bit more of what goes on, but at the same time, it's just good for Zarek and I to have something fun to do and not think about what's going on in the field 24-7 while we're in these hotel rooms. So other than Zarek's wonderful pitch man skills, uh, <laughs> how's the podcast going? Uh, it's good, man. It's been fun. Um, you know, uh, I think we're going to, we have an episode coming out where we talk about the snow game a little bit and, you know, it's just something that, 
we're enjoying doing and the response has been, I think, better than what we anticipated. So, you know, the pressure's on for Zarek and I to keep, uh, keep turning these things out and keep uh, making them pretty funny. But it's just a fun thing to do. And, you know, like I said on the video, it's, it's a lot of travel and it's a lot of time in the hotel. So it's just something a little bit different and something to keep your mind off of soccer because you can't be thinking about it 24-7. Yeah, I really like the, the podcast just because knowing you two guys off the field and how well-spoken you are and how much you love sports and, and the stories that you told, I think it was really fun to, to listen to it. So I think people should go on there and listen. Uh, I'm really curious, though, how things are going with, with, your, uh, with your books. Uh, you've written five of them now, is that right? Yes. And I, I've purchased a few myself, <laughs> and I've gotten some donations as well. But uh, it, it's been fun to read them. Uh, and I'm just curious, uh, you know, are, are, are you planning on writing more or where are you at kind of in this process? Yeah, we're kind of we're kind of at a stage where you know we have different ideas and there's different feelers out there. Um, you know, we've talked to, uh, we've talked to certain teams and certain different situations that are out there. I will keep that pretty tight lipped, but you know, we're seeing uh, we're seeing if we can get those things to go through, which would be pretty exciting. But you know, as of now, we got the five working titles, and you know, we're working hard to sell them. They're up on Amazon and all that good stuff. So. You know, we're just still enjoying it, and hopefully this year we can get out in the community a little bit more and do a little bit more donations and do some good things like that with them as well. Latest one was Alabama. Right? Yes. I, 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 it's crazy down there, right? How's that book doing? Yeah, yeah, I'm from Florida, so the Alabama uh, fanhood, I get, a, I get more of a piece of it out, than out here in Oregon. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's been going really well, and they love it in Tuscaloosa, and they love, they love the Roll Tide, so it's been, so it's been fun. So I'm curious, uh, you know, uh, just recently Nick Romano ha has announced his retirement, and uh, you played with Nick at Salt Lake. We both did. Uh, and I'm just kind of curious, you know, looking back, you know, on his career, uh, you know, how much uh, uh, did you get from him, you know, working with him, and, and what do you think of his career overall? I mean, I think his career, if you just look at the records and just how long he's been able to do it at such a high level, I mean, I think he's been playing 20 years, 20 years something yeah. like that, and like Crazy. 19 or 20 of those that he's been a starter, and he's been one of the better ones in the league. So if you just look at that consistency over, tw I mean, 20 years, man, that's a long, <laughs> it's a long time to be really good at something. So, you know, that speaks for itself in terms of the records and things like that. But for me, you know, what I took from him is just trying to be as consistent and you know he does a little lot a lot of little things with his footwork and his positioning and the way that he reads the game that you know I think is a big part of the reason he's been able to have such a good career so I try to do the best I can to take to take from him but you know osmosis isn't a, <laughs> it doesn't really work that easy but I'm definitely trying he had some great games at Providence Park obviously over the years I think Timber supporters won't be too sad to see Nick <laughs> out of the league